Here's a nice little mountain lion warning. We're not gonna see any mountain lions. Okay. Okay, a couple items that I wanted to talk about. One was no pain, no gain. Part of who we... Oh, sorry. Okay, so today there's a, a lot of people in the parking lot today, and I'm here at my mobile aid station getting ready to run Rattlesnake. So it's 10.30 in the morning. I'm trying something new, kind of in prep for the race next week. Uh, I'm sitting up here with my GoPro, so I'm completely geeking out. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure how usable that footage will be. So we'll go ahead and get started then. As you can see behind me, there's no lake where the lake should be. Not good. Oh. I did it again with my watch. I can pay attention to my running or I can pay attention to the camera and what I'm doing for the channel. But apparently I can't do both. Sorry. Don't come, don't come, don't come. Don't come. Ah. 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 Yeah, got me, but that's okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. She didn't see him. She didn't Just a few moments after saying no mountain lions, I get a dog. First dog bite. The irony of doing that while talking about pain and training and the ability to start distinguishing between things that are life-threatening versus things that are merely inconvenient versus things that are just a natural order of things. That, uh, I was rounding the corner. Yeah, I was running with his dog. And uh, I guess I startled him. He startled me. I tried to step out of the way, but the dog charged me. Didn't bite, but must have uh, bared his teeth and got me on my chin. So far, 2021, started off with a bang knee, and now dog scrape. Look at that. Again, in a normal year, this would go, all that stone would be covered with water and you'd probably see boats and rafts. I have to start over again. I completely forgot where I was going after the dog attacked. My heart rate is really high and my foot is going numb. So I loosened my shoes and that doesn't seem to be helping but uh, we'll see how that goes. So the general gist of what I was thinking about was part of training is not just getting you conditioned. That's obviously a huge part of it. It's also getting you mentally prepared. One of the things that's been a big impediment to me recently is just with all the stress in my life, I've been in the middle of my workouts or running and I'll just feel this power drain. I'll have a random thought or I'll remember something I didn't do. Anxiety, panic attack, whatever you want to call it. And you know, one of the things that I like about getting out here is just that ability to block off a certain amount of time, several hours, and just say from here to here, nothing matters. And your world really closes in. A family, a job, a career, all of these concerns really narrow down to step by step. I like to call it the eternal present. 
because while you can think of things abstract like the finish or the start, you know, you really get down to the point where you're so focused on the present that nothing else really matters, just the next few steps. And to, to be able to spend a few hours in that environment is very refreshing, despite everything else. About to begin the cardiac trail up. regarding pain you know it's just a part of the sport you know and you certainly get conditioned so that the pain instead of the pain being immediate you know you start pushing it out so as your miles grow I find that it's funny whatever your goal is it seems to be an adjustment so no matter how far you go if for that day let's say six miles is your goal you push yourself to a point where around five miles you're ready to end 20 miles it's about 15 16 miles that you're ready to end 100 mile for me it's about 50 to 60 miles where i really push it out you know and the goal is for that first 20 miles to be relatively fresh because as the old saying goes nobody's ever won a 100 miler on the first 20 miles but many people have lost it and i know i have uh, when I look back at what I've done, that's where I, I lose it. Even today, went out way too fast for what I was trying to do. My goal here is four to five hours on my feet. I don't really have a mile goal, even though I keep saying 20. I just keep thinking that. I don't know why. But you know, when you're in this eternal present, you're constantly monitoring yourself. You're monitoring your legs, you're monitoring your chest, your breathing, your heart rate. And the more you do it, the more you get used to what's okay and what's not. So there's things that are uncomfortable and then you realize it's your body that's lying to you, you know. The first three miles are always the worst. You have this plan, you visualize, you wanna go out, you can see yourself running. But then you hit that first hill or there is no hill, you're just running. And your legs, they burn. And a lot of times people who don't like running, that's what they feel. You know, if you don't get further, your body is sitting there throwing everything at you saying, I don't wanna do this. this you know, your body's lazy. <laughs> and I like to refer to it as a lazy beast and it lies to you. So you have to lie to it. It lies to you and saying that it feels bad. Uh, you know, you're gonna do damage, you're hurting. You gotta know the difference between the type of pain that means that damage is being done and the type of pain that your body uses to keep you in stasis. And it's stasis on the couch watching Netflix. That's where your body wants to do. And you have to constantly cajole your body to doing other things. Some people find this easier than others, but in essence, much of that pain is illusion. One of the things that I think I was most surprised about becoming a runner is that when I broke past that three mile mark and went into four and five, I found that I really enjoyed four and five miles, but I still have yet to really enjoy the first two miles. The first two miles always suck. Well, not always, but if you never get beyond that, you never know what's beyond. And there is something that's beyond. Time is weird too. For instance, six miles, in some respects, seems longer than running 30 miles or 20 miles. Three miles is a bookmark in your day. It's an interruption. You've got stuff going before, stuff going after. Usually you plan it in the middle of a day. If you're doing 20 or 30 miles in a day, odds are you've got no plans before or after. That is your plan. And you get lost in the moment. It's funny. I find committing myself to a 30 mile or a 20 mile run is actually easier than going out for a six. The other thing is, no matter how far you run, those first two miles take forever. Something strange happens around five or six miles where you start losing track of miles. They just kind of disappear. That first mile is like, oh my God, when's the first mile marker coming up? Feels like I've been running forever. But at 15 miles, they just kind of fly by. You lose track of it. So part of training is knowing that when your shins are burning, when your heart rate goes through the roof, you get chest pains. There's certain ones that are worrying that you've never heard be felt before. If you don't run very much, you go out there, everything's new. It's very scary sometimes, but you do it more and more. And then you realize, while it's uncomfortable, it's not threatening. This is pretty. That 
That was a great run. I had a lot of time to think out there. There were a lot of dogs out there. And, uh, you know, I don't blame the dog that bit me. Uh, well, he never, it wasn't so much a bite, but a charge, and he get, you know, put two, two nice little gashes in my leg. But, uh, like I say, I don't really blame him, because there wasn't a whole lot of room for him to go. It was a single track, uh, and I turned a corner, and he and his person was, uh, uh, the guy was running the opposite direction and it just startled the dog. So, I mean, it was just an accident from that standpoint, but the dog wasn't on a leash. Yeah, far far be it for me to say that, I, I don't know if this was a leashed area or not, but uh, it just seems to me that if you're on a single track, uh, that a leash would be a good idea. I didn't make a big deal about it. I just went on, I mean, uh, I, and on my run, I was thinking, well, I don't really want to say anything about this, like, because I know that I've got a lot of friends that have dogs. I have a dog. Um, we always keep ours on a leash because even though she's the sweetest thing in the world, you just don't know what a, uh, an animal is going to do in certain situations. And so uh, I think a leash is usually the best idea, especially if you're boxed in in a single trail. So for the rest of the, the trip, I mean, I, there are several dozen dogs that I came across most of them on leashes. The few that weren't on leashes were on a fire road. There was a lot of room, no no issues. And, and so I was gonna think, well, maybe that's not an issue. But then just about a mile ago, another dog, almost the exact, I think it was the same breed, it was just brown instead of black, coming along the other way, single trail, and then without warning, just lunged at me. And I was walking at the time. I was trying to give them as wide a berth as possible. And the dog just snarled and, you know, came at me. The only difference is, is that one was on a leash and the, mat and the um, person was able to uh, control it. And, you know, I waved at them and wished them a good afternoon and, and went on. But it just serves to underscore that uh, when you're around people, and you're on single trail there you know you need to you need to have control of your your animals despite everything um it was still an absolutely wonderful day to run and i took her last breath full place where uh, the place where she was going to yeah so long is it's money that i can actually reach you for uh, in 2021 automated appointments or press two all right, how can I help you this morning? Yeah, so I was running um, up by Sacramento this weekend, got uh, bit by a dog. Uh, it's Ooh. not so much a bite, but it was a scrape that charged me and then cut, cut me twice with... Okay, so I'm glad I called because while it doesn't hurt specifically, it is a little red and puffy this morning. Did have some nausea yesterday, but I think that was just because I was dehydrated. Here I am at the pharmacy. Do you know where you're headed? Fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you're getting an antibiotic today called Augmented? I have a race this weekend, a running race, mm -hmm. and um, I just wanted to be, um, I was just a little concerned with like the sunlight because I've heard about antibiotics and sunlight. This, that... But this one doesn't have that safe. So that's good news. Certainly could have been a lot worse. My leg's feeling okay, but I'm glad that I have the antibiotics. And I'm also very glad that this appears to be the type of antibiotics that uh, doesn't have negative uh, side effects with the sun. So uh, I'll still have my um, sunscreen on Saturday, as well as uh, just have to remember to stay hydrated and avoid any dogs out there. But uh, uh, it's kind of crazy, um, but I'm glad that this is, is over. And even despite this, it's always a good day to run.